Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. Welcome to another episode of my mini mandala series. This is episode number 64. I haven't done them in a few weeks because if I've got other big projects going on, it's hard for me to get these done um, for each Monday. But hopefully throughout the rest of the summer, we can keep going strong with these. I love them so much and I've missed making them with all of you. So mini mandala Mondays. To make these, I always have a coin to start my mandala. Then I use a micron pen, a graphite pencil, and a blending tool. I have a five inch by five inch little notebook that I make my mandalas in, but you can make them on anything that you have. And then I also have a scrap piece of paper that I will be using as a ruler. Okay, let's get started. So I love starting these out with a round coin. It just gets our focus, our center focus made, and um, it helps us with where we're going to place our grid. So I trace this with a pencil. Just somewhere on your paper. It doesn't even need to be in the center. And then I take my pencil and I find approximately where the middle of that circle is. And then I take my pencil and I put a line through it. So one thing about these mini mandalas is that I'm not using traditional mandala tools and I'm not using like a grid paper because I want you to be able to make these wherever you are with whatever you have on hand. And we don't want it to be complicated. You can probably hear my cat drinking out of her water bowl. <laughs> okay, so we've got the vertical and horizontal lines and then I divide up each of these corner sections with a line as well. And my goal in this is to check and see if these two sides on each section are about the same width. So if you make it too far off, you might have one section that's a lot larger than the other. And again, we're just doing this just by looking at it and hoping for the best, so it's okay if it's not quite even. All right, that is our grid. And now we're gonna pick up our piece of scrap paper. And I need to do a second circle. And I want it to be um, out here a little ways and I want it to be consistent around the whole piece. So to do that, I'm gonna put this edge of the paper right at the top of that circle. And then I'm going to put a little dot over here, probably about one and a half fingers tall. We're not using very accurate measurements here, but I want it to be a little bit wider than my finger. And I'm gonna put it on the scrap paper and then right onto my sketchbook. See how I did that? And then I go to this next one and I make a little mark and I just go all the way around. This is easier than getting out a ruler and using actual measurements. We usually have scrap paper around if we've got a sketchbook. Oh, I forgot one. Okay. And then I just take my pencil and I use a slight curved line and I connect each of these. And I tend to make little tiny lines and kind of guide my pencil the direction I want it to go. Again, we're not looking for perfection. It's okay if things are a little bit uneven or if some of your lines are maybe a little bit straighter and not as curved, it's gonna be okay. Look at that nice, beautiful grid. I 
All right, I'm going to pick up my pen. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Hopefully, there we go. Okay, so I love to make traditional mandalas. I also love trying to make each mandala a little bit unique so that you can learn maybe a new technique or um, a new pattern or a new way to make mandalas each time. So this one is going to be really fun. All right, so I'm gonna start with this pencil line where I put um, that first circle. And I'm gonna go into each section and I'm going to give it a little bump like that. So I'm just going on the outside edge of that coin area. And giving it this little curve from one side to the other. Looks like a flower. And now we're going to repeat that. So I'm going to go up a little ways and I'm going to give it another bump. And I'm not being exact in where I place those. I'm just hovering and giving it a second bump. And make sure it's a bump and not a straight line. Then I'm going to do it again, just from one line to the next. Focus on making sure and keeping them about the same width, although it's almost impossible to make it perfect. So just do what you can. Okay, we're gonna do another one. Hope you find this as relaxing as I do. I think I have room for two more. If you have room for two more as well, fantastic. If you only have room for one more, that is perfectly fine. Again, make sure you get these nice bumps in there. Mine tend to get a little bit flat sometimes. I have to remember to bump up. All right, I've got room for the last one. And mine did not all turn out even. Some of mine are touching that line out at the end. Some of them are not. It's okay. All right, get those in all the way to the end. And if you look at mine, they are not all the same size. It's okay. Now I'm gonna to go to this inside area over here and I'm going to come down and put in a set underneath that first set that we made. I'm going to do it one more time, making sure I do those bumps. All 
Okay. All right, if you've got that done, I'm going to leave that inside area um, just empty right now. And I'm gonna start where that first little set, the outside here, and I'm gonna follow this line just until I hit the end of my ink. So I start on the outside of this one and I go to the inside of that outer line. Oh, see, I messed up. I went past it on accident, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. I'm not gonna worry about it, but you wanna stop where the ink stops. Don't do what I did. Do you guys like it so far? I love how these are kind of a surprise, like how they take shape and what they turn into. I kind of love that for all of you. Okay, now I'm going to aura the whole thing. So when I aura, I'm just doing kind of what I did through here, but I'm gonna go really close this time and dip in and dip in and I'm gonna have that one spot where the line goes all the way through and that's okay I'm just gonna leave it but just adding this little aura Okay. All right, we're gonna do a little bit more on the outside and then we'll go back and do some details on the inside. So now we're going to go in these little divots that are left and we can ignore the pencil line now because we've either reached it or we haven't and it just isn't going to matter at this point. But in each of these little divots, I'm going to put a nice wide curve and I'm going to ink it in, except I'm going to leave a little spot for a little reflection. And then I'm going to aura that. So I go into this little divot here and I put in that bump leave a little space for a reflection. If you don't want to do a reflection, then just ink in the whole thing. And then I'm gonna put in an aura. And enjoy this little bit of coloring things in and adding this dark drama to our mandala. I'm using a PN plastic nib pen. And what I like about it is you can get a really fine line, but it's also easy to use for thicker lines or for filling in spaces. So if you're using a really light, thin point pen, it might take you a little bit longer to fill these in. And don't forget those auras around them when you're done. Oh, this is the one where I accidentally went out and it's going to get covered now. Look at that. 
so it doesn't matter. And if it didn't get covered, it'd be okay. I love making mandalas because I find them relaxing. I love the um, repetitiveness of them and the how they can you know be a mere image one side to the other often and I just find them very relaxing so I'm never too worried about perfection because that's not why I'm making them okay look at all those beautiful little dark spots now I want to put some dark in the center so I have a couple of options one is I can color in that whole little flower shape dark, which would be beautiful. Or I could put in little petals inside all eight of these sections. And if I end up only doing six or seven because of how tiny the space is, that's okay. Put a little bit of dark in there. Okay, now we're gonna decorate some of these lines. So I'm gonna go to my very outside band here, and I'm just gonna put in some striping. So I'm just gonna go like this. And just very slowly, very carefully touching one line to the next. I'm filling that in. If you would like to do a different design in that section, then please, please do whatever you would like. It's hard for me to believe this is episode 64. And there's just endless ideas, endless things we can do. And I hope that some of you are taking these ideas and creating your own and then just changing them up a little bit. They definitely do not need to look like mine. If I get going too fast, then I, my lines don't touch the top and bottom. Remember to hold your pen lightly, loosen your grip, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the next set. If you need to pause um, and catch up, that's fine. So I'm gonna skip the white one right next to it and go down to the next one. And for this one, I'm going to put in spirals. And so for mine, 
This is my little curved area. I'm gonna try to put in about three. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna jump up and spiral, jump up and spiral. So I'm touching the top and then coming, touching the bottom and doing that little bit of a spiral. They kind of look like waves. If you'd rather just put in a spiral like this, You could do that as well, or you could put in whatever pattern you want. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to do about three, so I'm gonna need them to be pretty big. One, two, three. If you end up putting in four, great. Some of your sections might be a little bit wider than others, so go right ahead and put in however many it takes to fill it up. My last one in each section, I'm really like jumping over to make it fit or make it fill up the space, I guess. I love this little five inch sketchbook because I can turn it as I work. So much more comfortable. That one had to get really long, but look at it, it still works. It's okay. All right, I'm going to go on to the next set. So I'm going to skip a line and go to that next set there. And for these, I'm going to put a circle or an orb in the middle of each one. And then I'm going to do the letter C off to the side and then a backwards C. And I'm just kind of stacking these little orbs in there. So I'm doing, let me get my scrap paper again. So I have a circle and then I'm doing this to fill in that space. This is one that is really fun to make, but at the end when we shade this, it's gonna look amazing. I like squishing those in there. And then I'm going to take a moment just to add ink in those little spaces in between. I just think this gives it a nice clean little touch. You don't see all those extra spaces that are left. You can 
can also clean up your lines a little bit. So if you want to, you know, round these out a little bit more, you can by adding some ink. I'm going to put just the slightest little reflection in each of those center ones. All right, now I have um, another white section and then I have another area that I can fill in. So if you have that as well, wonderful. If you don't, then you can skip this part or you can add some details into the inside here. But for this part here, I'm just gonna add those little stripes like I did on the outside. Nice and light with my pen. I'm going quickly and then I end up making them look messy. I have to remind myself to slow down. All right, we are not done yet. All right, so to finish this one, um, I'm going to put in a leaf shape all around the outside. So to do that, I'm actually gonna take my pencil and I'm going to get, go into each of these sections and I'm gonna put a line as if I were dividing from the center, dividing out like that. So pretend like I'm going from the center and I'm just giving it that little grid line in the middle of those. It's just going to help me keep my leaf shapes even. Imagine coming from the center. Imagine coming from the center. Okay, lots of spinning tonight. All right, and then I'm just going to put in these little leaf shapes. So I'm going to start at the very top, um, little black, um, I don't know what you call that, little orb up there. And I'm just going to go like this and then down. So I go from one to the other. And then I go from this one up and down to the other. And I'm keeping mine pretty low. Not worried about them being even. That one was way smaller than that one for some reason. Each of those, I'm going to trace that center line. And then I wanted to match the flow of these where we have all of these bumps. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to bump up to the top of that little orb. And I'm just going to keep going like three or four times. I'm going to do it the opposite way. I'm only starting down at that bottom area. I'm not mimicking quite what we did here because I'm going back down to that center point and coming up.
They're like fancy little V shapes. Some of mine have more than others. Here's this little short one that I did. We're so close to being done, and we're so close to doing the shading that I think you guys are going to love. It's just going to transform this. one of the larger ones that we've done. I'm going to add an aura to the outside. Look at how that just gives this whole piece a little hug, brings it all together. I really like this one a lot. Okay, before I shade, I'm going to initial my work. Let my hand rest for a moment. Let you guys catch up a little bit. It's pretty amazing what we can draw in just a half an hour. It's so much fun. Okay, you ready? This is a great time to like take a before picture and then an after picture because it's gonna look so different. I'm gonna grab an eraser. I have this little kneaded eraser and I'm just going to get these grid lines off of here. Hopefully I don't smear any of my ink. And I'm going to get this little circle out of here, too. That looks pretty good. Okay, the shading. So I'm going to shade. Usually we shade like each little like section that we made like each circle but this time we're going to shade outwards so i'm so excited so i'm going to take each of these lines where it goes from that little center flower out to this edge here and i'm going to put graphite on both sides of the line and i'm putting it down pretty thick and I go to the next one, the same thing. I'm going to put graphite on both sides of the line. And the next one. Don't be afraid to go dark. Going too light on this will not have the same effect.
it's already changing. All right, so now I'm gonna take my blending tool and I'm gonna go into each of these little um, pointy upside down triangular sections. And I'm going to pull that graphite towards the center of that piece, but leaving the center nice and white. Then I'm gonna do the other side and push it towards the center as well, but leaving that center nice and white. And now do you see how it starts to look like? It's, um, it's like a piece of paper going like this, right? Like it's bumping up and then tipping down. So grab my, gra or my blending tool and I push this side out towards the center and then this side in towards the center. Go right up to that top edge and leave that center nice and white. That's what gives it that illusion of a shadow and a light. Leaving that middle nice and bright. Look at the side over here. Look at the four that I did versus the side I didn't do. And look at how these look like they're bumping out. It's so beautiful, I love it. I like making sure I get right up at the top also. Look at that magic. Doesn't that look amazing? And you could always go back in and add more dark to that first line. If you really wanna make that look dramatic. The idea is that that line is your darkest part and then it gets lighter and lighter until it hits the center. I think that looks amazing. We didn't even have to do this outside edge and it would have looked amazing. All right, so now for the outside edge, I'm gonna go around this whole piece here with the graphite. You don't really need to do it over those little black orbs, but um, I'm going to just to kind of keep it consistent. And I'm pushing down pretty hard again. Just adding that line of graphite all the way around. And then I'm gonna push that up into those little leaves. And that's just gonna kind of push that whole center part towards us and push those leaves towards the background. Got a 
adjust my chair. I've been sitting for a while. Okay, our last bit of shading. Now I'm gonna take each of these leaves and I'm going to put some graphite in the center and then some graphite along that inside edge and over the orbs. It's kind of a lot. Maybe I'm gonna go over the orbs first. Each orb right against that line And then that center line, just put it right on the line. You can go on both sides if you want, but I think it's enough just to put it straight on the line. And then trace that inside edge of each leaf. My graphite pencil is Zentangle brand and is just a number two pencil. So there are lots of options for shading and you can pick what pencil tip you like, but you could really just use a number two school pencil. Okay, I think I'm going to shade the orbs first, so I'm just going to take each orb and just pull that graphite away a little bit. It's a very minor detail, but I like kind of giving those their own little shadow, helping them pop out a little bit. To shade that middle by just by pushing it out just the slightest on both sides. And that's going to do that same effect like we did on the inside. Adding that little bit of shadow to both sides of the line makes it look like it's tipping down in there. So a little bit on both sides. And then that inside edge, I'm just going to pull down a little bit. I hope you took a before picture because this was almost more uh, lesson in shading than it was mandalas. But this looks absolutely amazing. And the key to all of this shading is to leave white space. So you see that white space we have in each of these little leaves gives it that illusion that that's the part closest to the light. We did it. I probably went a little faster than you, I apologize. That was a pretty long video. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope you loved this one. Um, I'm so happy to be back doing these. Again, this is episode 64. I'm gonna write that down here. And with all of my mandalas, I write the date, and then I write one or two sentences about what's going on in my life or what's on my heart this week. Um, or just something special, something I'm grateful for, um, whatever. But I love going back and reading all of my little journal entries. So I really hope that you love that one as much as I did. And um, I hope you come back next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you. Bye-bye.